Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at the pros and cons of staking your cryptocurrency on an exchange. And we're going to look at some of the wild returns that you can get for having your cryptocurrency on these exchanges. And of course, looking at some of the reasons why not to. So we're going to dive into that. But before we do, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, bell notification icon, follow us on Twitter and Instagram for daily Q&As. The Investor Accelerator Lite is launching on Monday. Make sure you've got your details registered down below so you can get notified when that launches on Monday. All right, as I said, today we're going to look at Binance and I'll go through a bit of a price update for Binance as well because there has been a lot of news on Binance recently. Now we're going to look at Cardano and just a couple of other cryptocurrencies to give you an example of the differences here on the platform just to do a few comparisons. So it's going to be quite a light video and uh easy, you know, easy done and it's pretty easy to have a look at. So first up, Binance, I've covered this before. They do a lot of good stuff. So I think I need to put this out first. It's by no means a FUD video. I do stake on Binance. I think it's great. I like Binance. I think the price is going to fall further and I'll just be waiting for a time to get in. So I'm not looking at this as a FUD. This is just the news that's out. Binance, it's done a lot of burns. It's burned a lot in USD values, hundreds of millions of dollars. It has burned a lot of BNB, millions of BNB. You can see the uh, the times that they have burnt their supply and how much of the supply has been burnt at that particular time at what price BNB was at. They got a lot on the cards. There's a lot of uh, a huge ecosystem. Of course, PancakeSwap went massive this year. Binance is doing pretty damn well and they've got lots of new things coming out as well with the ecosystem building. Uh, they've got Binance Card, Binance Lite, so on and so forth. So I, I just wanted to mention that at the beginning in case people thought of it as being FUD. All right. So let's have a look at the staking rewards here. So we go into our Binance locked staking. You basically just open this up when you get to your homepage. Clay, for example, 15 days duration, 21%. Sand, 12%. ADA, the one we're looking at here, 17.7%. That's for seven days. So it says here it's sold out. We're just going to check it. And I've got a few hundred ADA sitting on here to give us some numbers. Put in the max, can't do anything because it's sold out. So you'd only be getting that 17% for the seven days. And that's not 17% for that entire seven days, as in you're going to get 17% return just in seven days. It's 17% over the course of a year and you're just getting a portion of the seven days, which is still over three times better than your typical staking pool of around five, five and a half percent. All right. So it's pretty good. If you can get a subscription here and then continue to renew it every seven days, but you can see that it gets sold out. So what are our other options? We've got 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. 90 days is also sold out. 90 days would give us uh, 8.38%. 8 so still better than the staking pool. 30 days gives us 5%. So about the same. Five, five and a half is generally what we look at with a staking pool. So we can't, oh, we can use this. We got put in here 300 or so. We've got a minimum of one ADA, maximum of 500,000. So that's the max that we can put into the staking pool. So that's one drawback. And I'm sure many people don't have 500,000. But we'll see in a minute that these maximums can get very low. They can be very, very small. And this changes every time the renewal period comes up and even day to day, it says. So for the 30 days, we would receive one point, call it 1.6 ADA for that 30 day period at 5%. If we go for a 60 day period, same amount, but we've got to have it, we have to have the ADA in there for two months. Then we get 7.79%, which is better than the typical uh, fee we'll get on our staking pool if we did it decentralized through our Yori or Daedalus wallet. Now we're going to get 4.8. So we're getting 1.6 before. 1.6 times 2 is 3.2. 3.2 ADA if we, were, if we could only do the 30 days because for some reason the 60 days was sold out, just like the 90-day product is sold out. So 60 days here, we're going to get an extra 1.6 ADA within that two-month period. All right, so that's how this works. This isn't like 7% for the two months, 60 days, and 7% again and 7% again, which would work out to be like 7 times 12 is 84. <laughs> so you're not going to be getting 84% per annum or more because this is nearly 8%. Uh, so just keep that 
in mind as well. And now if you don't renew, then you'll miss out on those next few days of uh, re rewards that you could get. So this is a much more manual process. There's one of the drawbacks, but for uh, seven or 8% return, why wouldn't you? You know, it's pretty good. Now, if we check out another cryptocurrency and I've looked through a few, I'm gonna use one inch. Here it is, 15 days, 31% return. All right, I'm gonna stake some one inch. Probably have a few on here, four, there you go. Okay, so max four as the example. Now, the max I can put in here is 150 one inch. At a price of $2.30, that's only going to be about 300, 350, something like that. Three to $400 worth of one inch. For some people, it's a lot. Generally, it's not that much. And you're looking to get 31% on only this few hundred bucks for 15 days. And so it's a lot of manual work to do that. If anyone wants to do it, there's the opportunity. Of course, this is a centralized exchange, which means your cryptocurrencies aren't held by you, they're held by the exchange. So if something happens to the exchange, then you lose your cryptocurrencies. Personally, I don't think that's gonna to happen to Binance. Uh, if something did, uh, they've done it in the past, they've been hacked by $40 million and they have repaid everyone. So I have a little more trust and a little more faith in Binance, but that's really just my own trust and faith in them. There's nothing else to that I could really fall back on if anything went wrong. And so I'm just looking at things that can go wrong and it's not to say that I won't get the coins, but I potentially could not use my account. For example, we have some uh, bannings going on through U the UK, even though this isn't Binance, the spot accounts that we use here. This is the uh, the non-registered firms, well, the firm here, the Binance Market Limited, not the, the non-registered firm you can still use, Binance.com, but the FCA move bars Binance Market Limited. So that might not affect us too much, but something like Ontario. Binance has not been able to service clients in Ontario. So now you are staking on Binance and you've been given a notice that you have to remove all of your cryptocurrency from Binance by the certain date that they give you because the regulations come in, the government comes in and says, we don't want Binance here anymore. So then I've got to take those off the exchange. Probably not, it, it doesn't need to be a bad thing because you've got a backup plan, say uh, you want to go and stake your cryptocurrency with Yori Wallet, doing it decentralized. So you've got a backup plan there as well and you've got a plenty of time to get your coins out, but it's just something to pay attention to that these things can come up and prevent future, uh, future returns if you are working on Binance. And if you don't think it's gonna to happen to your country or your jurisdiction, we can see here as well, Binance has had has an Australian subsidiary, Binance Australia, run by Queensland-based Invest by Bit. Invest by Bit is Austrac registered, so Australians can deposit Australian dollars instantly using PayID and OSCO. So for now, we can still do it. There has been some talk about it. We'll see what happens. I'm not trying to throw any fat out there. I think we'll be okay, but I still need to have this in the back of my mind because I'm investing and I want to be making some returns on the cryptocurrency that I have. And so if I've got to keep thinking about this and watching what's going on with the government and where they're going to close down the exchange that I'm getting returns on, then that's going to be a little bit annoying. It's not the worst thing in the world. I am making better returns there, but there is the other option of using the staking pool. More news about Binance. If we happen to use Binance, there are other exchanges that we can stake on as well, but I'm just using Binance as the example here because it is the biggest exchange and it seems to be that the regulators are going after Binance first and the others later. As we can see with the other article, they're also going after Poloniex and Qcoin. So keep that in mind. Binance investigated by Cayman Islands Monetary Authority. So Caymans has now joined UK, Singapore, Japan, Germany and Canada, and the growing list of jurisdictions. Okay, that's the point we got here. C CEO CZ is reluctant to reveal where the exchange is actually based. That might be a problem for the jurisdiction that you're in if you were looking to stake on something like Binance or some of the other exchanges which don't have a headquarters or home. Malta was considered the Binance home until the country confirmed that there is no exchange, that the exchange wasn't licensed to operate there last February couple of the other pieces. Japan warns against crypto exchange giant Binance as well. So these are sort of things that pop up, but as long as you've got a backup plan, then I guess you could keep using these until 
the plan needs to be brought in and used. So just make sure you've got a backup plan if you're going to go through any of these other sorts of uh, exchanges or trading or staking your cryptocurrencies on them. Okay, so now that we've seen the difference here with one inch, we can see we've got a 15 day turnaround. We get a pretty massive return here of 31%, uh, but it's only 150 one inch. All right, if we go to 30 days, then we have a maximum of 50,000. So at, at a price of $2.30, I'm just going to use two bucks so I can do the maths, $100,000. So now we're starting to get a little bit uh, bigger accounts rather than a few hundred bucks. 60 days sold out, we only had a 6% return here. So there's quite a big difference in the returns. And you can see that just from 15 days at 31% up to 30 days, which was only 5%. So you just got to keep that in mind as well and then just continue to shuffle all of your coins around to different exchanges to get those returns. Now, the backup plan, Yuri. Yuri could be one of those options where you are holding your Cardano, it's decentralized. You're not going to have those issues of someone trying to shut it down. You own the keys and then you can uh, delegate your cryptocurrency, your ADA in this case, to a staking pool. And I've got my staking pool up here, but you don't have to use it. As I mentioned here, you can use any staking pool that you so wish. I am not offended if you choose another staking pool. I appreciate all of your support if you want to use the Investor Accelerator staking pool. And this little note here just goes on to explain the margin because there are margins to run the staking pools. And if you want to understand the numbers, then I suggest go through and have a read of how much it actually costs compared to a 4.5% margin, which is what is on the Investor Accelerator, and something that is anonymous, which might be 1, 1.5% or 2% out there, someone that doesn't have any other um, information that they're bringing to the audience. And the too long didn't read is literally about 2 bucks per year. But I advise go and have a look at that yourself if you're really interested to stake more of your ADA for about a 5, 5.5% return per annum and not have to go through the headaches of Binance and changing every few days. Maybe share it between the two and then you're getting a bit bigger return on something like Binance. But essentially the pros and cons to that is now that you can see is that it takes a little more work with something like this, which is great. You can get a better return. You just got to put the work in, got to keep watching the, the days and sometimes those, uh, those periods of 15 or 30 days aren't there. So you'll have to just make do with whatever is available on the platform or transfer it out to another exchange or wallet that is going to give you that return. Now, just to cover the price of Binance at the end of the video, even though this is a pros and cons to staking, I did say I would have a look at the price briefly for Binance. Uh, the price is now 280. Okay, it doesn't look like this is going to be holding up. We have been on a pretty steady downtrend and this goes for the US dollar, the BTC pair and the Ethereum pair. Now, this doesn't mean the Binance has to get destroyed and it's a bad project. You can just see from the pattern and the chart and the trend that the trend is heavily down for B and B. So might be some good buying in weeks or months to come. But at the moment, uh, this token is looking like it has been burnt out and it needs some time to rest. So I'll look at that in a little more detail in future videos. But essentially, that's the way I view staking on other platforms besides the holding your own cryptocurrency in a decentralized wallet and using the staking platforms which are laid out by the crypto company, for example, Cardano and their Yori wallet using different delegators and staking pools to earn that safer interest, although it's lower, less work, and of course, safer. Now, the higher risk way, but of course, higher returns would be something like Binance. It just requires a little more work and you'll just have to be on top of whether the timeframes are going to change and the interest rates are going to change as well. And then, of course, whether your jurisdiction, wherever you are around the world, uh, allows the use of Binance for you guys. So that was my update when it comes to staking, some pros and cons, really just high level stuff. I don't dive into it too much because at the end of the day, that's what I can see that really makes a difference. Is the platform safe? What do I have to do if I need to get off that platform quickly? And can I do that? So quite a high level. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If there is anything that you think I should have covered in more detail, happy to look at that in future videos. But for now, make sure you've hit the like button, subscribe, bell notification icon, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. TIA Lite is starting on Monday. Make sure you've registered your details down below. Uh, the link to that is in the description. Catch you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.